Assalamu alaikum. So today our topic of practical is examination of hearing. Examination of hearing is concerned with vestibular cochlear nerve which is cranial nerve aid of our body. So its examination includes general examination and some specific tests for hearing. General examination includes general seeing the ear, its external in the external artistic matrix and etc. But for specific test, we have different tests: whisper test, voice test, audiometry, and tuning fork test. Our main topic of concern is tuning fork test. Today we are going to conduct that. So, in this topic, we have three types of test: Rhine's test, Weber's test, and Schaubach's test. First of all, Rhine's test. Before proceeding, I would like to tell you about tuning fork. Tuning fork mainly consists of three parts. Its prongs, which are these elongated parts, its stem, which I am holding right now, and its foot plate. This is the main structure of tuning fork, which we need to know about. First of all, Rhine's test. Rhine's test is used mainly for understanding the difference between ear conduction and bone conduction. So, how it perform it? We have a subject here, and I will demonstrate it for you. Assalamu alaikum. Before proceeding further, you should know about the basic protocol of approaching a subject. You should approach him from his right side. First of all, greetings. Take consent and then perform the procedure. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Basir Hassan and I am going to conduct your test for hearing. Is it comfortable with you? Thank you. First of all, I will be using this tuning fork and I will be placing it in your mastoid process here in, on the back of your ear. When the sound of it fades away, you will tell me by raising your hand. Okay? Okay. Then I place it near your ear. When it fades away too, you will tell me. Okay. okay? Is that okay with you? Yes, I am okay with that. For this process, we need a tuning fork and a stopwatch. So I am going to start it. For setting the tuning fork, you are going to hit it on your hypothenar eminence. So here we have done the Rhine's test. Its readings are about nearly 20 seconds for bone conduction and nearly 10 seconds for air conduction. For the main point here is the air conduction includes the bone conduction time and the further added time for air conduction. So therefore the main conclusion in normal values is air conduction is greater than bone conduction. And it is called as Rhine's positive result. Rhine's test is positive here. But there are different scenarios. If there is conductive difference, conductive difference means if external cutic stick canal or external ear canal is not is blocked, or the middle ears ossicles, which includes malus, ingus, and staples, these are ossified or calcified a little bit. So there is a difference in conduction of air sound waves. Then air conduction becomes less than bone conduction, and it is called as Rhine's test negative. In nerve deafness or inner ear, which includes ocular apparatus, vestibular apparatus, sorry, that is connected to the brain through cranial nerve 8, vestibular cochlear nerve. If that is damaged or both bone conduction and air conduction times is a little bit impaired, but it's, it has a scenario. For example, bone conduction time is a little bit down about 15 seconds and air conduction is totally 20 seconds. But so overall, air conduction is greater than bone conduction, which is nearly equal to Rhine's positive test. But it's not it's not near to our normal values, which is 35 and on 45 seconds. So here's the scenario for Rhine's test. Next test is the Weber's test, which is used to compare bone conduction on both sides of the ears. For this, I will suggest my subject to move on that side. Weber's test. It is used to compare bone conduction on both of the ears. 
normally bone conduction on both ears is same same because all like if we place a tuning fork here on our forehead both of our ears will hear the same sound but it is different in different scenarios in conductive deafness sound is better heard on deaf side like if one of my ear is not properly functioning it have conductive type of deafness for example ear is not going inside the ear so i will hear it a better on that side why because external environment noise is suppressed in that case so that's the main point here in nerve deafness sound is better on a normally normal ear healthy ear whose nerve is fully intact so i'll demonstrate it on my patient again same protocol you are approaching from your right side beating consent and then the performance assalamu alaikum my name is dr wasi hasan i'm going to perform you conducting hearing test is, is the doctor with you yes i'm doing that for that i'll be placing the tuning fork here on your forehead when you stop listening you going to tell me if you hear both side no not normally no normal sound if not then tell me. As my subject heard both sides normal, they have both sides normal hearing. Sorry. And the next final test is Schwab's test. It compares bone conduction of subject and examiner. Like I'll be comparing my subject with myself. For the like, normally uh, both of us gonna have the same type of same bone conduction time. In conductive deafness. Bone conduction type of my subject is better from me. Why? Same scenario here. Like its environmental noise is suppressing in that case. In nerve deafness, bone conduction of subject is less. That's so. If you have any query, you can ask. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and share with your friends. Thank you for watching. Allah Hafiz.